Hello everyone, it's Father Pat. I'm coming to you not from my prayer corner or even from the church this time, but from here in my office. Um, a little quieter around uh, the office these days, but um, uh, some of us still come in to get things done here and there. I wanted to talk a little bit because people have asked me how I'm doing, and um, um, I get that question you know, probably a few times a week, and I really appreciate the question. I know that it's because you care about me and you care about all of us, and so I just wanted to let you know that I'm doing well, um, but so are all of us in the rectory. There's there's seven of us um, together, not all in one rectory, in between two, but we we have uh, meal and prayer times together. Um, as you know, the three of us priests are here, also four seminarians, which I introduced them on at one of our daily masses uh, just this past week. Um, so we're all doing well. We're all we're all doing as best we can. We're um, we're not. Um, just sitting around doing nothing. The uh, seminarians are all doing classes online, um, and those of us priests are you know, certainly responding to anything that needs to be done. Um, uh, people who are calling in for anointing and stuff like that wherever we can do them. Um, but also, uh, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of ministry in these days. I mean, I've, I've learned how to use Zoom to do everything from have a staff meeting to drop in on a youth ministry meeting or or uh, or be part. I actually just did a, a, a class with Dr. Doug Muir uh, from our, our staff. We, uh, we did a virtual class for Benedictine University. Um, usually we would have those folks here and give them a tour of the church. We had to sort of do it virtually this time. So we're learning how to do everything, and that takes a lot of our time and creativity and energy. So uh, that's kind of what's filling up the days these days. Um, but I wanted to talk, you know, real specifically about a couple of things that um, that are hard for me and um, that I, I want to see what we can do about, you know. And the first one is the fact that folks can't receive the Eucharist. And that hurts my pastor's heart a lot because I was ordained to for the express purpose of providing the Eucharist for my people. And so I know that it hurts your heart when you can't receive that. I know that a lot. Um, we've, we've been uh, doing a principal search um, in these days, uh, looking for a new principal for our, our parish. And a couple of the candidates m mentioned how difficult it is for them, even emotionally, uh, uh, spoke about how difficult it is for them uh, not to receive the Eucharist. And so that's something that um, I'm, I'm, I'm keenly aware of. And I want you to know that um, just as soon as we can, we're hoping to, to make that possible in some way. I don't know how that's going to look. One thing that we do know, and, and our, our staff is working on a, a plan for what the church is going to look like when restrictions are loosened. The one thing we know is that it's not going to be like flipping a switch and we're all back to normal. Um, so I don't know what that's going to look like, and uh, but we're, we're, we're looking at various options. And so just know that, that uh, we have a very creative staff and we're working on that. And as soon as we're able to to make some of those things happen when restrictions are loosened a bit, uh, we certainly will be. And we'll be con communicating with you about that. So know that that, that hurts me a lot, um, but I, I, I continue to believe that um, spiritual communion is the remedy in these days and that God's grace, as we know and the Catechism teaches us, is not ever limited by anything, not even by the sacraments. And so knowing that you can't receive the Eucharist does not, is not an obstacle, obstacle to God's grace feeding you. And so just know that that's the case in these times. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is kind of related, right? It's, it's, about, it's about feeding. And so many of you know that for, for some year, for about a year or, so, or more, maybe a little more now, we've had a food truck every now and then uh, come from the Northern Illinois Food Bank and in partnership with Catholic Charities. And we've done that in our parking lot, feeding the hungry. And it gives them not just um, non-perishable food, but also some uh, fresh food as well. And it's been a wonderful blessing for people. And, you know, typically we probably feed about 150 people. But in these days, as you can imagine, the need for it has ramped up exponentially. And so just this past week, we had the biggest food truck we've ever had. And we, we gave food to 250 families and ran out. And we had to turn away around 200, actually a little more than 200 cars. And that hurts my heart a lot. Um, and uh, so we're, we're working on things. Um, it, it's a possibility that we might be able to get two food trucks at a time, and we're doing them twice a month now. Um, they, they cost a bit of money. We have some money in reserve, but uh, they do cost us a little bit of money um, to do. Um, but we've also had partnership with some of the great businesses in town and stuff. They've all come forward to, 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 to give money for that. And so I'm really, really blessed to know that. That's one of the wonderful things about being here in Plainfield. Um, but the thing is that we're that, that uh, as time goes on, where we're doing them twice a month all through the summer, we have them scheduled already. Um, we're we're running into difficulty getting fresh food, and so I've, I have some 
things in the works and I'm, I'm really excited about that. And I'll probably be able to say more later. But the thing that has become very obvious to me is that things like meat um, are really hard to get and they, and they could get harder. And um, that's not just, you, you know, asking, you know, even asking uh, butchers or, or, or stores if they can give us some of their stuff that's left over. They don't have anything left over. They're not even getting their full order from when they order their stuff. Um, so that's really of concern to me. And, and uh, one of the things, I'm half Italian, I hate to see anyone go hungry. Um, so in these days when we are having difficulty uh, getting um, food to people and when people are going hungry, um, I think we need to be in solidarity with them. That's what our, our faith teaches us. And so I'm going to ask something that's maybe not a little bit, maybe not a real easy, something that you kind of associate with Lent. Um, but every Friday, I would like to ask people to abstain from meat and to fast in some way and to pray. And to do that in solidarity with, with those, solidarity with those who are, are hungry and also in solidarity with those who are producing the food for us because they're taxed a lot. They have people who are sick too, and so they're not able to, to do as much as they could. Um, I know that the government's working on things to make that possible, and, and thank God for that, but um, they still need our, our, our prayerful help. And so I'm asking everyone. Um, now, I'm not asking you anything that you really shouldn't be doing, to be honest with you, because even, you know, we all thought that at Vatican II, um, uh, you didn't have to, to uh, give up meat except on Friday, but that's actually not the teaching of the church. During Lent, that's most important, and that's put up to, that's kind of cranked up a notch, but the Catechism teaches us that every Friday, in uh, just so that we would remember the sacrifice our Lord made for us on our Friday, um, we are supposed to uh, abstain from meat. And if we can't abstain from meat, we're supposed to do something some other act of penitence. Well, I'm asking you to do an act of penitence and abstain from meat and even fast if you can in some way, giving up something, and to pray during this time because I, because our faith teaches us that fasting and prayer is the way that we can move mountains. And if we ever want to see our lives return to some sort of normalcy, whatever that will look like in the future, and if we ever want to see an end to this disease, yeah, people can work on all those things, and that's important, but they need to be supported by our fasting and prayer. That's the only thing that is going to make it really happen in this world, because our God is always merciful, and he calls on us to be in solidarity with those who are in need. And so in solidarity with, with those in need, I, I really ask you to please abstain from meat until we get to a different place, um, to, to fast in some way on Friday, not abstain from meat from every day, just on Friday I'm asking you to abstain from meat, to fast in some way, and to offer some additional prayer, whether it's an, an extra rosary or, um, or, 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 or just some time in, in quiet reflection. Um, just, or even, an, an, it could also include an, a, a, an act of charity in some way. So I'm asking you to do that. I think that that's really important. So as your pastor, I would, I'm asking you to please do something that's very important, and that's to fast and pray, and to just be in solidarity with the poor and those, in, those who are in need, because no one should have to go hungry during this, but they are. And so we need to be, um, we, we need to know that, we need to, to, to remember that in our hearts. And so when we sit down to the table and we can eat, to remember those who aren't at a table that day. And so please join me in doing that, and, um, and uh, hopefully that will bring a sooner end to all of this. That's, that's my, my fervent hope and prayer. I'm bringing you this because the Holy Spirit just smacked me in the face with it and said, this has to be done. <laughs> I, you know, I've, I've, I received a very strong message from the Spirit on that. And so I'm asking you to please cooperate with that and be part of that with me. Um, I'm not asking you to do something I'm not going to be doing myself. And uh, all of my friends in the rectory were going to be uh, cooking meatless. And, and even not having fish, because that's difficult to, to produce as well. Um, we're going to, we're going to, uh, to, to make some uh, changes in our rectory meals too, which, you know, they're not extravagant anyway. But when you're putting f uh, food on the table for seven people, as many of you may know, um, it, it certainly takes a little doing. But we are going to, to do that meatless on Friday and uh, we'll be offering fasting and prayer. And offering fasting and prayer for those of you who are in that situation. So know that you're in my heart. And so if you can join me now in prayer, as I like to do at the end of this, let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Loving Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for 
the way that you are working throughout this crisis. We thank you for um, the, uh, the good things that you are doing and lots of good people who are giving of themselves and for all the people who are on the front lines and those who are um, really in, uh, really rolling up their sleeves to make things work in these days. So we thank you for the, the grace that you are showing in them. We beg you for the grace to feed the poor and the needy. We beg you for the grace to take care of those who are sick. We beg you for the grace to um, keep safe those who are on the front lines of this, all the essential workers, and especially those in healthcare and first responders. We ask that you would continue to, to cover them with your grace and protection and help them to do your healing work in, in what they do. And we pray all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And as always, I encourage you to stay well, stay safe, and for now, stay home.